One day in 2001, when I was five years old, I remember when the TV was on the program Rage. For non-Aussies, that is a music video show that's been running for more than 30 years. And one time, it played the debut single by Gorillaz, Clint Eastwood. And I was like, holy fuck, it's an animated bear! Also, the song itself was pretty finna woke. Shame that phrase wouldn't exist for another 17 years. So we bought their album and we played it pretty regularly over the next few years. Then four years later they came back with Feel Good Inc. And I was like, holy fuck, they're back! So then we bought Demon Days and played that pretty regularly as well. So Gorillaz were definitely the first band that I was ever truly a fan of. I was pretty obsessed with them in high school. I got into the lore of the virtual band members and I played the shit out of the Plastic Beach point and click game on their website. <laughs> I did grow out of this level of Gorillaz fandom after a while, and by the looks of their last album, it seems like Damon Albarn is less enthusiastic about the whole thing too. But that's a later story. This video is about the two OG Gorillaz albums. Which album do I prefer? Let's find out now. Starting with Gorillaz the album. So of course, Gorillaz as a musical project is led by Damon Albarn, the frontman of legendary Britpop band Blur. The Gorillaz Project was a bit of a deviation from his last band, or I think it is, I haven't really bothered to listen to much Blur. Yep, I'm a Gorillaz fan that doesn't listen to Blur. I guess I'm a bit of a minority. So if you're watching this wondering what my thoughts are on Blur as well, well, short answer is, I don't really have any. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that hip-hop was never a big part of Blur's music, but it always has been for Gorillaz. American rapper Del the Funky Homo Sapien appeared on two of the album's singles, including Clint Eastwood of course, and there's plenty of program drums and sampling, mostly thanks to cult hip-hop producer Dan the Automator. But hip-hop hadn't taken over Gorillaz to the extent that it would on Demon Days and beyond. Instead, the overall sound of the album could be summed up as electronic rock, though it is a lot more broader than that, because this is, without a doubt, the biggest mix of styles on all of the Gorillaz albums, I think. You had the album's three major singles, Clint Eastwood, 19 2000, and Rock the House, being just straight up hip-hop, really. Album opener, Rehash, has a hip-hop beat, but it's also driven by acoustic guitar. There are some more melancholy tracks, like Tomorrow Comes Today, New Genius Brother, and Slow Country, which are rather sparse with some added electronic flourishes. There's elements of dub, which is a style that's like a slower, more psychedelic version of reggae, I suppose. A little bit of Latin music thrown in. Whatever the hell Man Research Clapper is, it's fucking awesome, that's what it is. And even punk rock in the mix, particularly on the song Punk. Yep, there's a song that's simply called Punk. And it is punk. And of course it only runs for a minute and a half. Also, did I mention that it's punk? So their self-titled album is certainly an interesting listen, courtesy of its varied production and instrumentation. This variation probably blew my mind a little when I was younger. The trippy echoes and the other strange electronic stuff thrown in out of nowhere is one of the things I enjoyed about the album the most. Might explain how I got into psychedelic rock type stuff later. Also, Damon Albarn sure knew how to create something beautiful with a melodica. If you don't know what that is, that's kind of like a harmonica, except you press on something like piano keys to produce the notes instead of just blowing. Who knew that a keyboard you blow into could be so emotive? Damon makes that motherfucker sing. So that's partly why my two favourite songs from the album have always been Clint Eastwood and Tomorrow Comes Today. And for a while, Clint Eastwood was also the best song ever. Even the rapping would get me hyped, and I generally hated rapping. I'm still not a rap or hip-hop fan now, though Gorillaz did get me into Dan the Automator and Dell's other project, Deltron 3030. Sample-driven hip-hop, I can get a bit more behind. Anyway, my interest in Clint Eastwood dropped off a bit after a while, but Tomorrow Comes Today? That's still one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Besides the vocal parts and the melodica, I'm not sure how it's still one of my all-time favourites. I guess all I can say is that all of the song's elements just fit together extremely well. Might not necessarily say the same for other tracks on the album. Rock the House? Never liked it. Like I said before, they're not a huge fan of hip hop or rap. And when the instrumental elements aren't all that stimulating as if on purpose to emphasise the rapping, like it'll carry the whole song. Yeah, and then you've lost my interest. Punk's real goofy, but it's also very forgettable. 192000? Oh, I almost forgot about that one. That probably tells you what I think about it, really. As for the remixes of that and Clint Eastwood that appeared at the end of the album on most editions of it, I'm just gonna pretend that they don't exist. The Gorillaz was always a good album, 
but it was also pretty inconsistent. I wouldn't trash any of the songs nowadays, but I still don't really care for Rock the House 192000 and Punk in particular. But this was my favourite album ever for a while, mostly because I didn't listen to much more music until my later years of high school. But is it even my favourite Gorillaz album? Well you're about to find out now as we move over to their next release, the one that turned them from a buzz band with crossover potential to a bona fide pop sensation. Now I think even tons of people who don't follow Gorillaz would be aware of this album, and that definitely wouldn't be the case if they continued with the gloom and underground hip hop vibes of the first album. Mind you, the album still features slightly more underground rappers. Massively respected, but pretty far from Eminem levels of worldwide success. Guys like Booty Brown, MF Doom, and De La Soul. But this time, they mostly feature on tracks that are more upbeat and catchy as fuck. This shift to a more radio-friendly sound thankfully didn't dull Alban's wacky sensibilities under the gorilla's name. There's plenty of genre and style hopping on Demon Days, from Feel Good Inc. and Dare taking over the dance floor, to unpredictable electronic rock on Kids With Guns and No Green World, a little inspiration from blues in Every Planet We Reach Is Dead, the more quietly reflective El Manana, the semi-drum and bass rhythm of All Alone, and some funkier beats accompanying spoken word from the late Dennis Hopper about strange folk who start mining a mountain shaped like a monkey's head. You can basically sum up the appeal of Gorillaz to two things. They're catchy as hell, and they do some pretty cool stuff with the production. But like the self-titled album, this album felt inconsistent to me as well. That was probably more the case when I was younger. I guess I was a bit less open-minded in relation to music back then. Oh Green World was a song I initially didn't like, but upon revisiting, I really dig it. I guess I needed a while to get used to the disjointed elements and noisiness. It's like a really mild take on a Death Grip song. Like, really mild. It goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, it But still, it's a bit of a crazy song. But Alban holds it together with a great vocal melody, which he does a lot. I also used to not really care for a few of the songs in the latter half of the album, particularly the stretch of tracks from November Has Come to Dare. November Has Come? Well, my thoughts on Rock the House from the first album pretty much explain that as well. All Alone is more meh than I don't like this song. It feels a little disorganised, which is probably a weird critique to make when a lot of the songs on the first two Gorillaz albums are all over the place, but here I suppose it didn't come together quite well enough. White Light could get fucked as far as I was concerned, though I mean look at this lyrical genius. And of course, Dare got played on the radio a hell of a lot, so that's probably the main reason why I didn't really like it. I mean, because I got oversaturated with it, not because I'm a massive hipster douche. The song's also a little repetitive compared to the rest of the album, so that's probably the other reason. But on re-listening to it for this review, I'm actually starting to think for the first time that maybe I actually do like this song. I actually quite like White Light now too. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Anyway, I think I was just unable to notice the rest of the song besides the vocals for a while. All alone, I am more okay with, though I'm not exactly sure what I really think of it. Still don't like November has come though. So like I've already said, Demon Days is full of catchy songwriting, some great synth parts, plenty of other good instrumental bits as well, and the emotional title track is a brilliant way to end the album. And while I've found a little more interest in some Demon Days songs over the years, I think my overall interest in it has worn off quite a bit since. And unlike the self-titled album, Demon Days doesn't have any songs that truly blow me away. Plus the best songs on the first album have worn off to a much lesser extent than Demon Days. I'm definitely not going to dispute Demon Days' overwhelming popularity compared to the first Gorillaz album. It's very well written and produced, but I'm afraid the first album will always win for me. That being said, both albums haven't really been near the top of my all-time list for a long time. So out of 10, I'd maybe give Gorillaz an 8.8 .8 and Demon Days an 8.5. And Tomorrow Comes Today is top tier. Next time on Gorillaz, Plastic Beach and Humans. Oh, and I guess The Fall. I keep forgetting that's an official studio album, though. Shut up. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.